This podcast is being recorded and produced on Gadigal land. We pay our respects to the traditional custodians of this country and elders past, present. We extend our respect to any First Nations, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us today. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Hello, hello. Good morning. I feel like we need to come up with something that we actually say at the start of every episode. Well, we did try, didn't we? Hi, scrollers. Yeah, we stopped saying that, didn't we? That was we? a bit gross, though. It gave me the heebie-jeebies. Well, we'll come up with that. In It's the new year now, so we'll come up with that, I yeah. think, at some point this year. Because we just go in with something different every single week. Yeah. Well... Welcome back <laughs> to another bonus episode. We've got all year to figure out how we want to start this podcast. Yeah, send us your suggestions. But today we're talking about 2023. We're doing like a little wrap up for ourselves. Yes. Of what our 2023 looked like. Mm-hmm. Some of the lessons we learned, some of the things we did, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You're looking at me like... Well, yeah, you go first. Tell us about your 2023 journey. You oh. tell us about your lessons you learned. You tell us about like... You know, New Year's resolutions, did you stick to them? Did you set any? How was your 2023 in general? Well, I feel like at the start of every year, I always do like say, this year I want to do this. But then so much happens in the year that I get to like now, like a year later, and I forget what those things were. Like I haven't ever really set New Year's resolutions and like made them on a vision board or anything. But I feel like maybe I do want to do that for 2024, like actually set some really big goals or things I want to work towards or things I want to work on. Because now I'm looking back at 2023 and I'm like, did I have any goals? I don't know, because I did so much shit in that time that I forgot if I even set them. That was a lot of words in one (laughs) sentence right there. But I'm loving it. Keep going. Oh, okay. 2023 for me, I would say was a year of absolutely hustling. Like I worked harder than I've ever worked before. We uh, achieved a lot within my company, which is fate. And did the most things that we've ever done before. We hired the most people. um, We opened the most amount of stores. We opened three stores within a 12-month period, which is crazy. We grew at a rate of over 100% from the previous year. So like doubled the company. And all I really did was work and work and work. So I guess going into 2024, you would think that I would say I want to like step it back a notch and like slow down and, you know, take some time for myself and have a better work-life balance. Like, you know, I feel like they're always the typical things that people may have for a New Year's resolution. But I think the problem for me is like, I don't want to do that. (laughs) (laughs) No days off. No. But I think a lot of people that see me on social media, like I'm just posting about work all the time. People always say like, when do you get a break? Or like, oh my God, you never stop. Or you make me feel like I'm doing nothing. I think the reason why I can keep going every single day and like doing more and more things is because I genuinely love what I'm doing. Like I never wake up and go, fuck, I don't want to go to work today, which is how I used to feel all the time when I used to work a lot of different jobs. But ever since starting my own business, and working for myself, I'm so fortunate to say that I never feel like that anymore. So then all these new exciting things that we're doing, like it never feels like it's too much or I need to slow down because I honestly enjoy it so much. Oh, Biggest lessons of 2023 for me would be there's nothing that I can't do or no challenge that I can't overcome. With 2023 being our biggest year ever in business, with that comes a lot of challenges, especially with how big our team is getting. I don't talk much about like my staff or anything on social media because I feel like that doesn't belong on social media. But when you own a company, the bigger that it gets, we've got around 50 employees now. That's 50 people that I'm responsible for. And with that comes a lot of like challenges and hard times and you'll get tested a lot. So I guess I've been challenged a lot in 2023 and I've learned that no matter how hard something may seem, I can always get through it. Like there's always a workaround. So yeah, I guess my biggest lesson is there's no challenge that I can't overcome. I've also learned in 2023, especially having so many people working for me now, is that it's important for me to protect my peace. Mm -hmm. Um, When you have so many people working for you, you feel so responsible for so many people and like their life and maybe their issues or their challenges that they're going through and being the CEO of the company. I feel like I'm a soundboard for every single person and all of their problems that they have. So I guess one thing I've learned this 
year is to take a breath and like not stress because it's very easy to get stressed out when you have so many people working for you. I feel like my only thing is work. <laughs> That's all what I am. About anything in, in life that you want to achieve, let's think about not work. I mean, la- was it only in 2023 you bought your house or was that mm-hmm. 2022? That was No, that was the end of 2022. Okay. But you've so, been renovating your house. So do we have goals with the house? Yeah. Do we have goals with AJ? Do we have goals? Get the house done is the goal. Mm-hmm. I always knew that renovating a house would be hard. Like it's not freaking easy. So I guess my goal of 2024 is to get our house finished. We're only renovating the front half at the moment, which is nearly done. Hopefully in January that will be done. But I think that would be a goal of mine is to get my space set up and like find myself at home. I feel like when you're living in a house that's being renovated, it never feels like you're never really comfortable because things are always moving around. Mm. Another thing that I want to work on is actually my personal brand. I feel like over the last few years on social media, I have become fate. Like Mm. I am just fate. Everyone knows me as fate and business owner and everything like that. What I really want to work on next year is more of my own personal brand, whatever that may look like. Posting more TikToks, me just wanting to post more on social media, but posting more fun videos. Um, I know like the way you do, Matt, how you post like just fun random videos. I kind of want to get back into a little bit of that because I feel like now everything that I post is like heavily work related. Yeah. But also another thing that I really want to do is utilize the knowledge that I have in business to share that with other people. It was a really interesting journey for me to go from YouTuber and influencer promoting products on my social media to then being a business owner. And I think what I always thought was that no one was really interested in seeing the business side of things. But what I've learned this year is that people actually are really interested in that. And I feel like I have a lot to share in terms of running a business, how to start a business, how to manage Mm. staff, how to properly run your Shopify, how to do this, that, and the other. Um, And when I went and did my talk the other week, when I did my first keynote, like I felt really good after that. So I know a lot of people are like business coaches and I've had so many people ask me over the years, like, will you coach me or be my mentor or whatever? And I've always been like, oh no, I don't know how to do that. But I think that's something that I'd also like to explore. It's freaking endless. But it's all to do with bloody work. Goals for me and AJ, you said, go on a Europe trip, but don't take him and just take you instead, (laughs) which we spoke about a couple of episodes ago. AJ and I are really good. Go on more dates together, which we already do. Get comfortable in our own home, which we haven't been yet. That's a privileged thing to be able to say, you know, I've been living in my house that's under construction. But I get it. You haven't really settled into it. No, we haven't. We've been living in it for over a year. So I'm looking forward to just getting settled into our home once that's eventually done. Would I recommend renovating a house? (laughs) Probably not. Yeah. It's not something I would ever think to do. I can't believe you've done it or doing it with everything you've got going on. I know, but it was one of those things was a good idea at the time and then you're halfway through and it's been a year and you're like, fuck. But it'll be worth it in the end, of course, and like what a privilege to be able to renovate a house. But would I ever do it again? You almost have to just like move out. Which you always said you may have wanted to do the block. So has your views on that changed? Is a goal of 2024 you want to still try and get on the block or is that dream long past now well, that you've done the renos? It goes goes on to what we were talking about a few episodes ago. I haven't ever had like two weeks off in my life. So how would I have months off to go on the block and Mm. film it? I think I would still go on the block. I have too many goals. This is my problem with this episode, Matt. Like where do I fucking begin? I should have written like a hundred dot points. I would love to go on the block one time. I would love to go on Dancing with the Stars. I would love to be a shark on Shark Tank. Yes. Um, what else? Is Celebrity Apprentice still a show? I'm not sure. Get me on there. Hopefully it comes back though. I did love it. I want to be a business coach and mentor other people on how to grow your business in 2024. And how would that look? Do you want like one-on-one you're doing Zoom interviews or in person or is it like you're doing seminars where like a hundred, a thousand? I would love to do both of those things. So another goal of mine that I put on my story a month ago or so now after I did the keynote speech was I'd love to host my own like business conference slash event. I'd love to combine all the different ones that I've been to and make this amazing event where you could have a thousand people come. But that's one thing that I'm not 
a hundred percent certain on how it would actually look. I'd love to do more keynote speeches. What about an ebook? An ebook on how to do business. On anything. I'll tell you what, I've always wondered about those. You know, people release ebooks, like whether it's a recipe book or mm-hmm. how to. How do people not get worried that just one person will download it and share it with everyone else? Like how does that work? I've never thought about it, but also how many people are they sharing it to, seriously? True. I mean, they could. someone could upload it to the internet and then... There it is. There it is. But yeah, I've never really thought about that. Yeah, that's what I think about. <laughs> but let's add that to the goal list. Ebook. And like business vibes or like cookbook? <laughs> oh, well, let's do them both. I'm going to do an erotic novel. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you another thing that I'm actually really open to, but I don't know how it would work. I would love to make more friends. Okay. Like, I have my friends. I'm not enough, clearly. Yeah, no, (laughs) I'm sick of you. But I saw, well, so I have like a new-ish friend. You know my friend Anita who owns Hero Packaging and sell anything online? Yeah. So she's in her 30s. I'm in my 30s now and we've only just become friends. We met at like an event. She came and um, watched my talk the other week and then she posted this really nice reel of us just like backstage with some music over the top and she wrote something on the screen like here's to like making new friends in your 30s. Mm. And then I saw another TikTok the other day about a girl who had like just made new friends in her 30s and she's like you can still make new friends like even if you're in your 30s. I feel like a lot of us think your friends that you have in your 20s and whatever like that's it kind of thing and then you burn some bridges with some friends and that's it. But I'm really open to the idea of making new friends and just having new experiences. Are you someone who like easily just talks to anyone though? Because even though I'm chatty, I don't really talk to many strangers. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess that's the thing. And I think that's one thing that I've always found interesting being in the position that we're in where we are online. Like, And I don't mean for this to come across in the wrong way or anything, but I have found being online for all these years and having such a big following, people, let's say 90% of people, they always look at you differently. Mm. I don't know if you feel the same way. You know, the other day I went into Mecca to get some Christmas presents and, like, I went into Mecca and like I was just going in there to just get some prizes for these games that we were going to play at work for Christmas. It was like a mini meet and greet in Mecca and everyone's like, hi, Brittany, can I get a photo? Can I get a photo? Can I get a photo? And I love meeting people. But then I find it hard to make friends when I'm seen in that different way to everyone else, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, how do I make a genuine friend? Which I'm sure I could, but I feel like when you're an influencer or have followers online or business owner or owner of Fate the Label and you're doing all these crazy videos that are getting heaps of views, people are always going to look at you in a different light. Yeah. So it's hard enough to make friends in your 30s as it is, but then I feel like having this added element of having followers online makes people look at you just differently. And I'm not even saying that they look at you in a bad way, but you're just kind of looked at a bit differently. Yeah, we've both had situations in our lives where someone has pretended to maybe not know who we were or know that we had a social following to gain something from us and then later it comes out that they knew who we were the whole time and did that Mm -hmm. on purpose. And so... I think that's also scarred both of us Yeah. because everyone I ever meet in my life, like without sounding conceited, you're going to be like, do they already know who I am? Do they already know everything about me? Because like, if I want to make a new friend, I want to make a new friend with someone I don't know. You know what I mean? I, I find it honestly hard to make new friends. Also, we're also time poor as it is. But yeah, social media has made it really hard for me to make new friendships and I have made those friendships earlier on and then it's just been online and then it's all gone to shit. Yeah. Do you think it's different when you're single as well? Maybe. Because we're in relationships, it's a bit different. Because yeah, like if I, I just so. go out and make a new friend who's a boy, Sky's going to be like, what's going on? That's true. You know what I mean? Maybe it's more different for you as well in that instance, where if you're mm. going out and making friends with another guy, like that's going to add a weird element to it. But yeah, I'm, I think in 2024, I'm open to making new friends. You watch my DMs. Everyone's going to be DM- <laughs> DMing me going, I'll hang out with you, Brit. But yeah, it's just interesting. Like I'll even notice it in the way where our company is continuing to grow and we're hiring people every single month, whether it's for our head office, warehouse or any of our stores. And I'm always shocked at how many people ask my staff about me. Mm. Oh, what is she like in real life? Or what's it like to work with Brittany? There's a misconception that you're just a totally different person offline. Yeah, or that like I'm anything other than just a normal boss. Like that's just the most interesting part of it for me. Like, yes, I've got this social media profile and 
That's how we promote our business. But to my employees, I'm just their boss. The same way to you, I am just me and the way that you are just you to me. Mm. I obviously love having a big following and that's how I've built my whole career and life. But I will say it has gotten in the way of me trying to make new friends because if I was to make a new friend and then we went out for dinner or whatever, or I go out to a bar, like there's always that, there's Brittany Lee Saunders. Like it's this weird, it's just this weirdness. Mm. And I always get so weirded out when people ask my staff about me, which I know it's like a thing that you're curious about and you want to know, oh, what's it really like to work for Brittany Lee Saunders? It's like, What's it like to work for Nova? And like, what's the CEO of Nova like? It's yeah. just as relevant as asking. We wouldn't that. even know. Exactly. <laughs> like, what's your boss like? Like, you work at Coles. What's the boss of Coles like? It's exactly the same as asking that. But just having this social media following makes everyone look at you differently. Not in a bad way, but it just makes it very different. Mm. So, yeah, there's my goals for 2020 format. Make more friends. Get rid of you as a friend. <laughs> go on the block. Go. I'm just making up shit, by the way. <laughs> but I'm manifesting at the same time. Do you have any words or vibes that you want to manifest in 2024? Yep. Cash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? Cheers to that, love. <laughs> Cheers to that. <laughs> Well, I'm going to say this was meant to be a little mini bonus yeah, episode. I've but been talking this whole time. You know, when I so thoroughly enjoyed listening. But I feel I, like I ran out of breath so many times because <laughs> I'm so used to you talking back and me having a second to breathe. Well, I was just enjoying, like, you know, just take soaking in. I love hearing about people's years. And, you know, I'm so into manifestation and all the rest of that. So mm-hmm. I think I'm going to have to have my own episode. This was your episode. Yeah, well, how about this was my episode. Yeah. Yours can be the next bonus episode. Yeah. I'll give that to you because I literally just rambled on for this whole time. Okay, thank you so much. I can't wait. Next week, I'll be back with my episode. I'll tell you about my 2023, give you a year of health wrap up and also take you through my word of 2024 and what I'm looking forward to. Thanks everyone for listening to me ramble on (laughs) with nonsense about my year and my goals moving forward. And my motto of the year for 2024 is cash. That's all you need to know. My motto is subscribe, turn on your notifications, <laughs> rate us five stars. That's my motto of the yeah, year. Yeah, please, please, if you haven't already. And uh, make sure you follow us everywhere if you haven't already. Yeah. For me, search Brittany Saunders. And for me, search All Right Hey. Anyway, Joel, I better let you go. I'm going to apply for the block. Mm-hmm.